The first pattern we're going to look at is the abstract factory pattern. I'm really happy that this is the first pattern we'll be doing because it's one of the ones that I use the most and I find it extremely useful. In fact, when I was hiring people, it would be one of the questions I would ask them if they could give me an example of a factory pattern or at least understood what it was. We're going to talk about first the problem that we're trying to solve and then we'll actually talk about the solution by using the pattern. So we have a number of different problems that an abstract factory pattern solves. One of the most common is that an application needs to support multiple database types. For instance, we may start the application and use SQL Server. Later on, it has to be changed for some reason to Oracle or maybe MySQL. And we just want to be able to do that without having to change all of the different pieces in the application that deal with the database. We don't want the application as a whole to understand anything about the database type. We only want just a piece of the data layer to understand that. I also came from the measurement world, and in the measurement world, we often use serial ports and Ethernet and other device drivers to acquire data. Now, of course, our application doesn't really want all of that serial port code spread out throughout the application. Most of the application wants to deal with the data. It wants to acquire the data and then process it and present it in some way. So in measurement data, we want to isolate the data source from the rest of the application. So that the application only has to deal with the data and doesn't actually know anything about where the data came from. Another example is we need to be able to create different report types. We might have some sort of application that exports data or graphs or charts to different kinds of documents. Now, of course, we also don't want the application to know throughout the application that it's creating a Word document or a PDF document or any of that. For the most part, we want the application to create the data that the document uses and then pass it to something that creates the document itself. So we're going to be using an abstract factory pattern to solve this problem of isolating these different types of either database types or data sources or document types from the rest of the application. So what does the abstract factory do? It provides an abstract class that the rest of the application can use. It will provide a generalized interface. So in the case of a database, it might provide an interface for the connection and command objects, but it would not provide an interface for a SQL Server connection object. It would just provide a generalized interface for a DB connection. So we'll hide the details of the type of database or the type of data source from the rest of the application. The rest of the application doesn't need to know. The factory class will create an instance of a class that inherits or implements an abstract class. So the classic form is to have an abstract class. You can also use a factory that implements an interface. So we're going to demonstrate in this case using an abstract class, but later on we'll also show you how to use interfaces. Another cool thing is we can use the abstract factory in conjunction with the factory method pattern. And we'll show that to you later as well. In fact, we can also use it in conjunction with the builder pattern as well. So a number of these patterns can go together as well as stand alone. So let's go back to our problem and we'll give it a little bit of a solution. We have that problem of we want to be able to work with different database types. So in our abstract factory, we're going to create an abstract class called database. Let's say it has two properties, one for the connection, which will be of type system.data.common.dbConnection. Note that there's no kind of database type in that type. The command property would also descend from system.data.common, and it would be of DB command type. So again, it doesn't specify whether it's SQL Server, or Oracle, or OLEDB. So that's the abstract class that we'll be passing throughout the application. So the application only knows about DB connection and DB command type. Now an abstract class cannot be instantiated. So instance classes must inherit from it. So anything that we create is going to be an instance class and not strictly a database class. It will be a class that inherits from our abstract database class. So we would like a SQL Server instance class. It will inherit from the database class. It will have a connection property. In that connection property, although it is of type DB connection in our abstract class, for our SQL Server class, we'll return a SQL connection. SQL connection inherits from DB connection, so it obeys the rules in terms of obeying the interface for the abstract database class. 
Likewise, our command property will return a SQL command. And of course, SQL command inherits from DB command. So that again, honors the contract of the abstract database class. And let's say we want to do an OLEDB server as well. So again, OLEDB server will also inherit from our abstract database class. And then the connection property will return an OLEDB connection, which also inherits from DB connection. The command property will return the type OLEDB command. And that, of course, inherits from DB command. So essentially the same thing that we did in the SQL Server instance, it's just we used OLEDB instead of SQL Server. But note that both of these hide the implementation details from the rest of the application because the application is dealing with the abstract class's interface, not the actual instance class interface. And here's our class diagram, and you can see that we have the abstract class database, and it has the properties command and connection, and then we have our SQL Server database class, which inherits from that. And it, of course, has the command and connection properties, as well as some internal private fields for underscore command and underscore connection. And of course, those are going to be the underlying fields that are associated with the properties command and connection. We also have OLEDB database, which also inherits from our abstract database class, and it has the command and connection properties as well. So that's the idea behind a database abstract factory. In our next lesson, we'll take a look at an actual code example of implementing this for real.